This is Dr. B, and we're going to look at a video here. How do we name simple ionic compounds? So by the end of the video, you should be able to name these simple ionic compounds really well. And the key is you really need to know the trend here for ionic charge. So the trend for ionic charge, if you look at group one here, elements in group one, one plus. Group two is two plus. We skip the transition metals. They are positive, but their charges vary. 3 plus, 4 plus, sometimes you'll see 4 minus here. Then we go down, 3 minus, 2 minus, 1 minus, and the noble gases are 0. So if you know this trend, it gets real simple, or it gets a lot easier to name ionic compounds. Let's try this with a periodic table here. So here's a periodic table with the transition metals kind of shrunk down. So if I ask you what the ionic charge on phosphorus would be when it formed an ionic compound, you could go 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, four plus or minus, three minus. So these are nitrogen, phosphorus, three minus. Or you could go this way, zero, one minus, two minus, three minus, and then we have phosphorus. If you were asked fluorine, fluorine, zero, one minus, and well, there we are, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, when they form ions, one minus. That's key. If you can't figure that trend out, you're going to have a hard time. Let's try one more, magnesium, one plus, 2 plus, so magnesium, along with these elements, they form ions with a 2 plus ionic charge. So let's use that to write the formulas for some ionic compounds. So if you're given something like calcium chloride, you find calcium, you find chlorine, so we'll write Ca, and then we'll write Cl for the chlorine. But because we have a metal here and a non-metal, we need to think about ionic charge. And you know calcium's 2 plus, chlorine, that's one minus. So we need two of these to write the formula for calcium chloride, which is CaCl2. And then you get rid of these up here. Let's do another one. So magnesium oxide. We have magnesium, that's a metal because it's on this side of the periodic table. And then oxygen over here, we have our nonmetals. So we'd write Mg and then O, and then we'd look at the charge. Magnesium's in group two. These are two plus Oxygen, zero, one minus, two minus. So oxygen is two minus and they balance out. So we don't need to do anything down here. We can just get rid of that. That's the formula for magnesium oxide. Let's try one that's a little bit more complicated. So magnesium nitride, here's our magnesium, here's nitrogen. So we can write Mg and N just like before and we can put the charges in. Magnesium is two plus, and we said nitrogen, we go zero, one minus, two minus, so these are three minus. And now we need to make these balance because it's an ionic compound. And here's a trick, it's called the crisscross method. You could just move the three down here and the two over here, get rid of these. And magnesium nitride is Mg3N2 and the charges do balance. So the crisscross method is kind of a quick way to do it. What if you're given the formula and asked to write the name? something like aluminum oxide. Well, aluminum's a metal, oxygen's a non-metal. So we know it's an ionic compound, and all we really need to do is just write the name aluminum and then oxygen. And then we get rid of the ending here and we write in IDE. And we just call it aluminum oxide. Let's do another one. And keep in mind, we're just doing the simple ionic compounds here, and we're not dealing with the transition metals. We'll do that in another video. So again, we find sodium right here and oxygen. We know that it's an ionic compound because we have this metal on this side and then a non-metal. So we just write the name for both of them. And then for oxygen, we cross out the Y-G-E-N and write I-D-E. So that's sodium oxide. Not too bad. Note, we're also not looking at polyatomic ions right now. Maybe in another video we'll do that as well. But for simple ionic compounds, that's pretty much it. But the key to all of this is knowing the trend for ionic charge here for our groups. And then it's also helpful if you know the metals and the nonmetals, so you can identify an ionic compound. So this chart here is really helpful to help you remember that. That's it. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.